Well, welcome to the Danebury Club Grass Track Championship and, of course, this year, Mark Heatley Memorial Trophy event as well. Um, hope you're all going to have a fantastic day. We're going to see some of the riders, have a chat to them. Uh, the track looks good. We've had quite a bit of rain overnight, uh, so it should be either deep or slick. We'll soon see when the grass is worn off. But what an incredible lineup of sidecars we've got this year, as well as the right hands. We've got the 500s, and also as well, we've got left hand sidecars, which you don't very often see in this area these days. It's mostly down in the southeast of England. So uh, let's go and have a chat to some of the riders. We got uh, one rider just uh, making his way up to have uh, scrutineering done, and that's uh, Chris Mackett, one of the veteran riders from Kent. How are you today? Very well, Di. Thanks. Very well. If it stays dry, it should be better. You don't like it in the wet? Not really. No, no. And of course, so we've had a bit of rain. You come through much from Kent area? Have you come through much rain? Not until we got down the M3, Basingstoke, and then it didn't stop till we got here. But it's looking good, though. You had a good season? Yeah, it's not bad. Not bad. What are you racing today? Pre-75s and uprights? 350s and 500s? Pre-75, 500s and the 500 upright. So you're going to have a busy day anyway? Yeah, yeah. We'll try and make the most of it for the winter. Fantastic. Well, we'll uh, let you go on and get scrutiny and done. Have a good day. Here we have uh, Henry Atkins, uh, uh, former youth grass track champion and, of course, uh, former British 125 Speedway champion as well. What happened this year? I don't know. It's just bike problems and trying to get them all sorted out, but... Next year will probably be a better year for me. How old are you now, Henry? I'm 12. 12, so you've still got f three years to go before you can race in the National League, basically, yeah? Yeah, I'm looking forward to the National League, so it'll teach me more with the older people, so that'll be better. Well, I see you're still having a, a go-round Somerset Speedway, and I suppose you're going to be going in front of a, a big crowd next week when they have the playoff finals. You're going to be racing around before the meeting starts, are you? Yeah, because Somerset's in the final, so that's good for them and good for me. So hopefully we'll win it this year. Brilliant. And uh, what about uh, your season? Otherwise, mechanical problems, otherwise you enjoyed it? Yeah, I've enjoyed it. It's great fun to be in the last year of the juniors and going up to the Inters next year. So better be fun. <laughs> Dad's still doing the bikes? Yeah, Dad's still mechanic in and he's making a good job. So Very good. Oh, well, I'll let you go and get scrutineered and have a good day. Thank you. We got Harry McGurk here then, number four, and um, is it is it this year you won the youth title? Yes. I thought it was. Yeah. So you've travelled around the country, haven't you? Yeah. Do you like racing down here in the south, or do you prefer it up there in the north in Yorkshire? Down here, because it's bigger trucks. Have you been doing any uh, youth speedway yet, or are you sticking with the grass track at the moment? I've been doing youth speedway. Started last year. Yeah. And I've been. I did the British Youth Championships at. Right house and I came seventh overall. Brilliant. How old, how old are you now, Harry? Nine. You're nine. What's your ambition? Speedway or grass track or both? Both. Both. Fantastic. Well, have a good day today. Thanks. Thanks. We get. We got Josh Dingle here, the British Under Twenty One Grass Track Champion, uh, and amongst other things, a qualifier winner this year down in your own home county of Cornwall. Been having a good season. Yeah, it's not gone too bad. It's. Uh, Wow, we haven't had many races this year, but um, the ones I have done, they're going quite well. What's happening down in Cornwall? Because so it seems like, um, I mean, we used to have meetings every every month, but now it seems to have died a death. Well, it's just people don't do it anymore. There's mostly motocross down there now, and people just don't want to travel down there. It's too expensive to come all the way down there. And so you the times the tracks aren't very good down there. You know? And you've got to travel all the way up? Yeah, wow. Well, got to be done if you want to do it's got traveling's got to be involved in it i always remember when you were riding in the last year of the youth uh, there was you battling with uh, uh daryl richings but daryl's gone on to speedway given up grass track and you've stuck with grass track it's good to see you stuck with the grass yeah well i i did try speedway that's right plymouth yeah i was racing i raced them for about three months and then i realized after three months that it was just too much traveling dad had to work and he can't work and travel at the same time you just can't be done so now, of course, so with not many meetings, the Swager didn't run this year as well, I think. Uh, there's, uh, you've had to travel quite a bit, haven't you, this year yourself, even for the grass? Yeah, well, the closest one we've done is Bridgewater, and that's still two and a half, three hours away, don't it? So, but it's got, like I say, it's got to be done if you want to race, so. Going to stick with it? Yeah, yeah. What's your ambition on the grass? What, next year? Yeah, what's the, what's the next, uh, what, what do you got, to, what's your targets? I don't really have any, I just... I don't know, I suppose try to retain the under 21s and um, do better in the Masters because I had a bit of a, I didn't have a very good one this year. I couldn't get out of the start and 
you can't pass those kind of guys when you're at the back. Right? So just try to do better in the Masters, I suppose. Are you riding 350s and 500s today or just 350? Just 500s today. 500s today? Yeah. Uh, well, you still yeah. got the 350, have you? Yeah, I've still got it, but me and Dad have been busy, we've been working and stuff, so uh, we haven't had time to put the 350 engine in this bike, so um, we just kept the 500 in and just for a spare, like, you know. Have you looked at the continent at all, the international meetings? Uh, well, I think we are planning on going abroad next year, but I'm not too sure if that's going to happen or not, but uh, hopefully if it does happen, it'll be a good, in, uh, good experience. Like. Fantastic, well, have a good day, good to see you back, on, back here at Daybury. All right, cheers, thank you. Thank you, Josh. With me, uh, Joseph Sturtridge. And, uh, well, last time I saw you race, I think it was Bristol, and you had major problems that day. Um, yeah, was, oh, not major problems. It was just, yeah, it was, I was trying to passenger and drive at the same time, wasn't I? And I, it was a new bike, and, yeah. You were running around the track, if I remember rightly. Yeah, it was. But, yeah, it was, it wasn't, it wasn't major troubles. It was, I was trying to, yeah, ride on two bikes, um, drive one and passenger another one. And the other one kept breaking down, and I had cut out go on this one. But yeah, it was a good day, even though I was knackered at the end of it. Well, we just spoke to Josh Dingle, another Cornish lad, uh, and of course, there's not much going on down in Cornwall at the moment, is there? So, have you travel all over the UK for your meetings now? Um, yeah, you've got to. It's just, there's, there's just nothing in Cornwall. Um, I think we've had two in Cornwall this year. So, if you want to ride, you've got to go. You've got to go where the meetings are. Any preference on the tracks? Or you just take them as they come. Uh, yeah, I'll ride anything. <laughs> don't, don't bother me as long as I get to ride the bike. That's all that matters. Did you get into the sport because of your dad being heavily involved with sidecars over the years? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I don't think I don't think I'd have even known what it was if it weren't for dad. So, does he still follow you? Yeah, he's over there now, stood stood up getting in the way. But yeah, he doesn't do your mechanic in there. No, no. no. You keep him away from that. I do try to. Yeah. Well, of course, if you ever get stuck for a passenger, that's what he was famous for, was being a passenger more so than anything else. Uh, we did try it when I first started, and he couldn't hold on for f he could hold on for three laps, couldn't hold on for the four, so that was the end of that. That's because of age? I think so, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, have a good day. All right, thank you. Thank you. Well, we're going to talk now to a 500cc sidecar driver, and that's uh, Dave Carville. And, uh, uh, well, you've been having a couple of good seasons on the 500 sidecars, haven't you? We, yeah, we are. We, you know, we try and progress every year. We do a few out in Europe. Um, I don't seem to get much luck at the British finals, but, you know, we, we keep pushing on every year. Now, you, 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 your father raced solos, and your grandfather was pretty hot back in the uh, late 40s as well, wasn't he? Yeah, back in the day, yeah. He was uh, in the Midlands. He was pretty well known, did a lot of grass. Um, did the Isle of Man TT, and it's just, you know, father to son, father to son. My brother's here racing as well. Um, I mean, nephew used to ride as well. Now, this is Steve racing today, isn't it? Yeah, he's having yeah. I, I was going to say, he's on 500 chairs. Uh, yeah. uh, that was a surprise, because he's always been a solo man. Yeah, he's uh, he's taking out my spare today, uh, just to have a little play, really, see how it goes. So your spare might not be spare any longer, if he likes it? <laughs> well, <laughs> we'll have to see about that. You've been giving, have you been giving him some tips how, how to ride the bike? I haven't. He hasn't asked for any. <laughs> he's just going to jump on it and turn left, I think. Well, hopefully you remember he's not on a solo. Yeah, he's, he does want to know some lines. So when we walk the track, I'll uh, just point out where he should be and uh, you know take it from there. Well, with Dad and Grandad being solo riders, what made you go into the sidecars? Oh, I always loved them. I mean... Um, I think back in, I don't know, it was the early 90s, I remember going to a Midland grass track, seeing the likes of Kevin Laird and um, various, Jim Ide, various riders having a go. And I just love these three wheelers. Um, and I had a go back in the day, back in about 95, 94, 95, when I was 18, and couldn't afford to do it any further than that. I went away to university, and then eventually you grow up a bit, you have a little bit, little bit more disposable income, and um, I got back on it. Brilliant. Have a look at the track here today? Uh, only just only from here, and it looks big. Your sort? Um, it doesn't bother me really. We'll, we'll, we'll tackle anything. That my old passenger used to say: the rougher they are, the better they are for me. Um, but this one looks good. looks quite nice. Danebury always put on some uh, good meetings because uh, this is their eleventh year running on a Sunday in October. Um, but um, five hundred sidecars uh, over the recent years haven't been so strong in British grass track. They seem to be more on the continent these days. Yeah, I mean the, the, the tracks out there and the meetings that they put on out there. Uh, to a high level, you know, it's it's it's, it's not professional, but it's it's quite it's, it's quite good. Um, and the class has always been a tough one to get into. I mean, I mean, for instance, today there's I think there's nine of us today, and 
in any race. You'll have three that could easily win the race. So it's a tough class to get into. The starting out is, is very difficult, but you know it's a bit of a marmite class. People love it or hate it, and I, you know I'm a lover. Brilliant. Well, we look forward to seeing some good racing with the 500 sidecars today. Yeah, thank you. Cheers. Thank you, Dave. Colin, can I just have a word? Uh, the sc sc scrutineering, yeah. uh, special touch. You need. What are you looking for when you check these bikes over? Mainly the condition of the bike, to be honest with you. A little bit on the dirty flexors, because that's a, a topic of conversation this year. Make sure they're the right height, and also the right tension as well. Um, make sure that the throttle closes properly, brakes work, and also, very importantly, when the engine's running, that they have the uh, ignition cut out on their uh, wrist, um, and I will be checking. And I know you should check in the helmets? Oh, yes, absolutely. You've got to check the lid and obviously for the ACU sticker. Right, I'll get out of your way. There's a right, well, we've got a 500 sidecar racer here, but not usually 500 sidecars. Normally, pre-75s and uprights. Colin Harris, what are you doing today, then? Well, I'm going to have a go on a 500 sidecar today, see how we get on, and uh, obviously with my daughter, see how it goes. Oh, so that's your daughter, is it? I, I see the addition to the programme was Colin and Taylor Harris. And I didn't have a clue. I thought, well, I yes. wonder if that is. Girl, yes, it's a girl. <laughs> it's my daughter, yeah. And you, of course. I didn't know whether it, I didn't know whether it was you. Yeah, it was me. <laughs> have you had any practice? No. Today's the first time. And where, where did you get the bike from? Um, a chap from um, Limington, Mike. He uh, let me have it for uh, the frame for nothing, so bought the engine off of him. Yeah, I've enjoyed it. I can probably enjoy it. Are you still riding in the solos today as well? Doing the uprights as well. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, it's that right. So, uh, yeah, we have a good day. Have a good day, I hope. And, of course, your team in the playoffs, Somerset Speedway. Somerset Speedway, brilliant. Are you still sponsoring again this year? Yeah, we're sponsoring this year. We'll probably sponsor next year as well. Let's just keep it going, you know. Brilliant. Loving it, absolutely loving it. Well, have a great day. Is this your daughter? Yeah, daughter yeah. Have you been on the back of one of these outfits before? Um, no, I've just literally done a start. Really? Yeah. Well, are you nervous? Oh, no, I'm all right, actually. I probably will be when I get on the line. You're not fancy having to go on the solos because you've got enough of them bikes in the shed, haven't you? Uh, yeah, he does, but no. That doesn't tickle my fancy. I'd rather be on a sidecar. Well, I should be in the commentary box. I should be looking to see how you get on. Thank you. We've got one of the uh, top drivers here, Rob Wilson. And um, I'm, I'm just doing my uh, grass track book from uh, 1983 to 1990. And you're, you're, you're in the thick of it way back then, I, I noticed. And you're still in the thick of it. Wow, yeah, I still am. I suppose I, my hair was black then, but obviously it's not now. So, uh, yeah, I've been around a long time, unfortunately. And you've won um, various centre championships. Uh, you won the Masters one year, didn't you, as well? Yeah, we've, we've, we've had the Masters a couple of years. And I've sort of stayed in the top six for a long, long time now. So, yeah, well pleased, really. Well, this 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 uh, particular meeting is usually uh, Neil Owen and John Hiscock. You always go well down here at Danbury. So these those are going to be your danger men today, are they? Or is it going to be Son Robbie? No, to be fair, yeah, young Robbie's going good, but John Hiscock really goes well, and he all you know he's still a good runner. And uh, Neil Owen, obviously, th these conditions will uh, help him a little bit, and Neil rides uh, exceptionally well in that garden. To be fair. I see you've got a big sidecar meeting coming up in April next year down in your home patch, the Sidecar Spectacular, run by the Astro Club. Yeah, I, d I don't know what that's all about. I haven't really spoke to Graham, but uh, we have had sidecar meetings before. I'm sure Wimborne have done Sidecar Spectacular and that, and uh, yeah, I d yeah, hopefully it'll work out for him. Yeah, because Wimborne did it for many years, and uh, I think that um, the sidecars... Um, they were so popular when they had the World Team Championship uh, back in August that uh, obviously sidecars were so popular because of the, the, the racing you put on that day uh, in front of that big crowd. And I suppose he thinks that to uh, repay you guys. Yeah, I mean, hopefully that's right. I mean, we've always done exactly that, you know, try to entertain the, the crowds and uh, race their motorbikes, you know. Um, that's really it, you know. Hopefully it, it does work out for Graham and the Astra Club and, uh, yeah, he'll have a good day. How many years now have you been racing, Rob? Oh, I've had 37 years of this uh, sidecar racing, so a long time. <laughs> did you do a bit of solo before? Yeah, I did, yeah. As soon as I was uh, old enough, uh, I think to be fair, I was probably out there when I was 15, but yeah, when I was 16, I'd done a little bit of solo. So it's over 40 years racing on the grass? Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. You know, I've been, uh, yeah, I've been around a long, long time. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Keep going. We want to see more of you. Yeah, no worries. Cheers, mate. Th thanks so much, Rob. I've got the reigning sidecar champion here with me now, Neil Owen, and uh, Neil, it looks like it's going to be tough opposition this year. You've got a few extra boys against you. Yes, there's a fair uh, line-up, uh, so it'd be nice to get amongst them and uh, see if I can retain it. 
Now, are we going to have any withdrawal symptoms having the left-hand side cars here? Because you started on them and you won the British title on them. Yes, uh, that's right. I, I'll have to watch. You know what? Uh, what? <laughs> what box I'll go into? I might. I might be uh, persuaded to go into the right-hand box. So left-hand. Uh, yeah, left-hand box. Yeah, but when you turn out on the track, you got to turn to the right. <laughs> so, uh, any is left-hand boys? There's still a few up in Wales now. Yes, um, there's a few there, but it's uh, it's just getting them out under the track. Uh, there's a few of them turned up. Uh, I've got bikes out there, um, but it's it's a long way from the travel. It's nice to see them out there actually on the, on this track in Danebury, uh, the club holding them, and uh, it looks like it's a good turnout for them. Brilliant. Now, of course, Danebury, you always go well. As I said, the reigning champion, but over the years, you've always done well for the, at the Danebury meetings. Yes, um, it's always been an interesting track, not flat, it's always been a little bit of a bank or sweeping corners or tight corners, so, and this time of the year you don't know what's going to happen with the weather, so it's, uh, yeah, we've always gone really well here. I think it was, was it the year before last, we had the exciting clashes with John Hiscock, or was that, no, it wasn't last year, it was the year before, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, so we, we've had a few ding-dongs there, and uh, sometimes he's won it, sometimes we've won it, so uh, uh, let's see if we can uh, entertain the crowd a little bit today. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, okay, thank you. Thank you, Neil. Well, we've spoken to uh, 500 sidecar competitors, we've spoken to right-hand uh, competitors, but we haven't spoken to left-hand competitors. And um, we've got Irwin and Alex Bowman from uh, West Wales, and I uh, haven't seen them for a while, certainly not yourself for a long time. And uh, great to see the left-hand sidecars here. Yes, it's good to come back down here again, you know, and we've had a good season so far, you know, and came second in the British this year, so it's been quite good. And you've been training your son up, Alex, have you? Yes, he's been with me now for the last season and a half, yeah. and he's doing fantastic. Now, we just spoke to Neil Owen. You had no thoughts of going right hand in the future like he did? No, no. I've been doing this now for 50 years. Riding started off with a 14-year-old with my dad, and I'm on the bike now, and Alex is coming with me. They still got those pirate meetings down in Pembrokeshire, or is it, just a, or is it mostly scramblers now, I suppose? No, no, still some pirates going on there, but they're getting... Far and few in between now, you know, the, it's the cost of everything, that's the main thing. Do you race in them? No, I haven't been down there in, yeah, well, I've, I've been living up here now for 14 years. Oh, you live up this way now? Yeah, I live. So where do you live now? I live in Burgess Hill, just outside Brighton. You move because that's where the most, most of the left-handers are, is it? Is that the reason? <laughs> that, it, that, the just that, that is the reason, because it's travelling and work-wise and everything, which is really good. Yeah. I didn't realise you'd actually moved um, up sticks and moved from West Wales. Yes, uh, well, it was 14 years ago now, and it's working good. And where do you live, Alex? Down in the south east as well? Uh, no, 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 I moved to uh, uh, La Foster Dean uh, nearly three years ago now. So, went up there for work purposes, met a girl, and the rest is history, as they say. So, And again, it's good for me, close in, close for racing. I just turn up to Dad's and jump on, and away we go. Fantastic. Now, left-hand side cars... Tell us what it's like to, to actually race. And what's the technique you've got to use to drive um, a left-hand sidecar? Because it's obviously totally different to a right-hand. Well, it's you have to depend on your passenger. More so than the right-hand? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, right-hander can go around without a passenger. Mm -hmm. I cannot go near, near a corner without a passenger on. So it all depends on the passenger. He's got to do his own work. So very important, a passenger. What is it, what is it like to be a passenger on here, then, uh, You've obviously watched the right hands and the 500 guys, but you've got to, do, based on what Dad said, you've got to do a lot more work, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, like Dad said, you know, we've got to have a lot of faith in each other, really, not just him and me. Um, you know, he can open a thought, let him go as quick as he wants, but if I'm not in that chair when it comes onto the corner, we're not going anywhere. So, um, I, I mean, I love it. I mean, like I said, I've watched my dad from when I was a small child, been racing together now um, nearly two seasons, and yeah, we've had a fantastic season this year with a new outfit, new engine, been really, really good. Brilliant. Is that the best British Championship result you've ever had? Yes, I came second this year. I come fourth, I've come fifth, I've come seventh. That's the best one I've had so far. So next year you've got to do the big one. Big one, yeah, and it's a, it's a big year next year anyway. I'm 65 next year, and it's, it's, everything's working good. You're going to carry on racing for a few more years? As long as I can, I will. Well, there was a guy who used to race down in Cornwall. Sadly, he's not with us anymore, but he raced right through into his uh, 80s. That was Adrian Kessel. So I'm sure that uh, you've got plenty of time to still race. Yes, I, I feel good in myself, you know, and physically pretty good. Still working, I'm not going to stop working. So, Brilliant, well have a good day. We'll look out for you both on the uh, racetrack. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, thank you. 
I've got with me now another 500 sidecar racer, Barry Bennett. And uh, Barry, ch changing the gear in there, are you? Yeah, look at the size of the track. Um, the uh, the straights are a lot longer than what we expected, to be quite honest with you. So, yeah, we'll try it, see what practice does. You had a walk around on the track then, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Your sort, the long, long straights or not? Yeah, could do with a bit more, uh, bit more rain. I was looking forward to it. I love the rain, <laughs> but hey. Uh, <laughs> Buy me. <laughs> Used to it in Wales, so uh, yeah. No, oh, it's your fault. We got it here today, is it? <laughs> Could quite easily be, but. Well, I think it's going to be dry. Yeah. But, um, I mean, yesterday, yesterday, yesterday we had a uh, terrible rain. You know, all across, uh, right the way down to where I live at Bristol. Yeah, it's cleared up as we've got here this morning. Um, we've got to about 20 miles left to go, and um, it was absolutely throwing it down. But yeah, fair dues, it turned out okay. So. Well, you're only just in the, um, the Welsh. But, oh, you're just over the Shropshire Welsh border, aren't you? You're only, only just in Wales. Yeah, um, we're on the outskirts of Shrewsbury, but we're just, well, about uh, 20 paces, you're back in England. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And what about, um, obviously, Leighton Laser, Welsh Open, Lamb Fillin Show, all these grass tracks up there. What's, what's happening up there? They don't do nothing now? I think, um, I don't know whether the insurance has killed it, lack of land or what, but um, all, the, all the historic ones... Uh, yeah, definitely. I wish. I wish. And it'd save our four-hour trip this morning, you know. Do you go abroad at all? Uh, yeah, we've been out there twice this time. So, yeah, they're, they're uh, another uh, another league again, to be quite honest with you. Like I say, we've got a lot to learn by what they're what they're doing out there, really. So, You must uh, live not too far away from my old friend, uh, Brian Curran. Mr. Curran's my uh, father-in-law. Oh, that's right. I remember you telling me on the. Remember you telling me on the phone that. That's right. <laughs> that's it. So uh, we have to keep him involved. So yeah. That's why he loves five hundred sidecars. Is it more than anything? Is it? Um, I think he got the love for him before that. To be quite honest, here Raz was one of his big, uh, big idols. So, but yeah, yeah, we keep him involved. So who's your danger man today on the racetrack? They all are, to be quite honest, here Wayne, Dave Carvel. You name it, they can all pull it out the bag. Tony Cook, you know, they're all they're all there and they're about, so like I say. Of course, Wayne's been off the scene for a few years, so obviously he might be a bit race rusty. And of course, you've got a couple of new boys there, Steve Carvel's riding today in that class, and also uh, solo rider Colin Harris. Having like complete novices out on the track where you're racing, will that be a problem? Um, I don't think so. I think as long as they're safe, um, it's good for them to start. It's good for us to see other people coming into the sport as well it keeps it strong and that that's that's what we want in this country is definitely 500 side cars have dropped off a little bit to be honest we had a year out um and um like i say they lost a lot in that year but um it's good to see them back it's good to see them coming back so brilliant well good to see you here have a good day thank you very much thank, thank you. you thank you barry well, we've met uh, quite a few of the competitors uh, this morning uh, ready for race action um, it is very cloudy. Hopefully it uh, won't rain because obviously uh, we don't want any more rain. I know a couple of the riders said they'd like some water, more water, for some more rain. But uh, I think we've probably got enough to keep the track nice and moist and it should be a good race meeting. Well, um, we've just obviously um, seen some of the riders. But what we're going to do now is uh, just capture, capture some of the magic uh, uh, in the practice. But we, before we go that, let me take the cameraman over here a minute. Look, there's uh, a very rare mo motorcycle here. This is a Douglas machine that was um, a famous machine built in Kingswood in Bristol. And um, years ago, they, they turned out thousands of Douglas motorcycles out of the factory in Kingswood in Bristol. And of course, it goes back to the 1920s. And uh, basically, that's one of the rarest bikes you're going to see on the grass track today.